Damasio's somatic marker hypothesis. Antonio Damasio has developed the theory of somatic markers, which he claims help us to make decisions. Quote, Somatic markers are associations between reinforcing stimuli that induce an associated physiological affective state. End quote. In other words, we evaluate experiences according to the reactions they elicit from our built in emotional equipment. When a similar experience occurs, this triggers the memory of the original experience. This is what Damasio calls the automated signal. Quote, when we make decisions, we must assess the incentive value of the choices available to us using cognitive and emotional processes. When we face complex and conflicting choices, we may be unable to decide using only cognitive processes, which may become overloaded and unable to help us decide. End quote. Damasio uses the metaphor of the body as a theatre for emotional reactions. Life is like a drama where the appearance of certain characters and situations is marked by our physiological reactions. When they reappear later in the drama, we recognize what they mean to us by the emotions they provoke the first time, which are now repeated as a marker. This automated signal system protects us by providing an early warning system and enables us to choose from among fewer alternatives. In other words, it's our first line of decision making. Damasio says there is still room for using a cost benefit analysis and proper deductive competence, but only after the automated step drastically reduces the number of options. Somatic markers may not be sufficient for normal human decision making, since a subsequent process of reasoning and final selection will still take place in many, though not all, instances. Somatic markers probably increase the accuracy and efficiency of the decision process. Their absence reduces them. End quote. Damasio has used psychological experiments based on gambling to test his somatic marker theory. In essence, these experiments use two types of card decks, one fair deck, the other one deliberately rigged to ensure big losses for the gambler. The question was, given a choice between the two decks, how long would it take subjects to learn to choose the fair decks over the rigged ones? Most healthy participants sample cards from each deck and after about 40 or 50 selections are fairly good at sticking to the good decks. However, people with a particular neurological problem known as orbitofrontal cortex dysfunction, however, continue to choose the bad decks, sometimes even though they know that they are losing money overall. Measurement of the galvanic skin response shows that healthy participants show a stress reaction to hovering over the bad decks after only 10 trials, long before they become fully conscious that the decks are bad. By contrast, subjects with this neurological dysfunction 
never develop this physiological reaction to impending punishment. Alan Shaw has argued that the left orbitofrontal cortex essentially is the Freudian unconscious. In other words, it plays a crucial role in our emotional lives, especially with regard to the social emotions. And in fact, all the new theories of emotion emphasize the importance of the social aspect of emotion. Edmund Rolls, for example, says, when considering the adaptive value of emotion in the context of evolution, we must remember that animals are generally social and that evolution may have led to the development of special reward and punishment systems to help to produce emotional behavior that is adaptive in social situations, end quote. Given that Homo sapiens developed the largest groups of any primate, they had and have the most complex social lives and consequently they needed the most highly developed and wide-ranging set of emotions. Ironically, humans may have the largest brains of any animal, not because they are the most rational of the animals, but because they are the most emotional. <laughs>